It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the two business owners of a podcast called the Cut Back Sports Podcast. How are y'all doing today? Doing well. Thanks for having us on. Glad to be here, man. Excited. Can you talk about how y'all got started with the Cut Back Sports Podcast and how y'all knew y'all wanted to be a podcast? Yeah, sure. It's a, it's kind of a fun story that we've been able to tell a couple times. Uh, Colin and I lived together um, a couple years ago while we were at the University of Oregon, uh, and we found ourselves always sitting in our living room, kind of having these long and tangential talks about what was going on in sports business or what was going on uh, just in the world of sports, because we're both kind of sports junkies and sports degenerates. And uh, we've, we've always also enjoyed listening to radio shows and podcasts. And uh, when the pandemic first started this, this spring, we both had some extra time on our hands and wanted to be able to kind of talk about what was going on. So we started more seriously throwing around the idea of, of kind of having some of the conversations we used to have in our living room and having those on microphones. And uh, that led us to where we're at now. What about you? How did you know that you wanted to start a sports podcast? Well, I honestly didn't know until uh, Ian and I moved apart and then Ian called me when uh, this global pandemic kind of hit and said, hey, what if we took our old conversations from the living room, took them to the podcast, uh, to the podcasting platform. And, you know, uh, we but like he said, we both have kind of listened to podcasts uh, even while we live together. So it just seemed kind of like a great fit, something nice to do at the time. And then here we are, 27 episodes later, uh, just cranking them out. Ian, can you talk about how you came up with the podcast name, The Cutback Sports? Yeah, so we uh, we went back and forth quite a bit, myself, Colin, and, and our producer, Kennedy. We were trying to find something that kind of embodied what the show was going to be about. So we like to talk about um, things that are very sports business heavy, which, which we kind of call the work. And then we also just like to talk sports, which we call the play. And so we wanted something that kind of played on that ability to go back and forth. Uh, and, and when we were thinking about sports terms that talk about that, we, we thought about a running back sticking his foot in the ground and cutting back and going the other way, which is what we do a lot of times. We'll be talking about one subject and it'll lead us down, down a path uh, in the complete opposite direction. So we thought it was kind of a nice little play on words and, and a sports term that most people were familiar with and kind of embodied what we were looking to do and types of conversations that we have on a daily basis. Colin, what are some, go ahead, go on, go on. Uh, Well, I was just going to say, it's just kind of like to peel the curtain back on our, on our show a little bit. Uh, There are a lot of times for those of you who haven't listened to it or or heard us go, there are a lot of times where we get a little off topic and get a little tangential. And, and so that's kind of, it kind of fits. It's very on brand for us, uh, both with the running back, cutting back and just kind of how we tend to tend to kind of, drift even away from our outline that that uh we put forward for ourselves colin what are some things that you cover in the podcast uh so so kind of like Ian kind of laid out we we tend to do each episode has a the same general backbone of we we set up kind of the work side of sports and the play side of sports because you constantly hear uh when you work in the sports industry you hear all about this work-life balance, or, or as we like to say, the lack thereof. Um, and so we decided to kind of split each episode in that way. Um, and so we uh, usually our sports business topics will revolve around sponsorship or, or the ne- labor negotiations or anything like that that can go on uh, with a league. And then, you know, then you have the play topics uh, where we get into the actual sports, usually much to the listener's chagrin. It comes to me defending the Houston Astros on a, on a scale, national scale uh, and st- things like that. So it's, it just changes every week. We try to, it's kind of like the last week tonight, uh, sum up 
of what's gone on in the sports world that week. Ian, who are some of the people that you have interviewed in the sports world? Yeah, we've had the opportunity to so far have four different interviews on the podcast. Um, we started with, with somebody near and dear to our hearts. His name is Pat Zajac. Uh, he works or worked for the Eugene Emeralds, which is a minor league baseball team out in Oregon. Um, now owns his own landscaping business uh, called Crisp out there for anybody who's listening. Um, and so he was able to kind of talk to us a lot about minor league baseball in the same realm. We had Matt Hamilton who works for the Amarillo sod poodles who are a double a uh, minor league team in Amarillo, Texas. Um, and then we've had uh, two women on the podcast, Chloe Colligan, who's currently a student at the university of Oregon, but interned uh, with the Washington football team. So we were able to talk to her about kind of what goes on in that building when some of the different um, kind of like sexual harassment allegations came out and, we able to get a cool kind of first person uh, viewpoint from her. Uh, and then we talked to one of our former classmates, uh, Jess Harley, who uh, runs and, and kind of heads the student athlete development department at the University of Oregon. So it was great to talk to her about, you know, how her and her team help student athletes at the University of Oregon kind of navigate their lives uh, in the classroom and on the field. And uh, especially with with the coronavirus and, and all the different things that are kind of at play with the college uh, sports landscape. So we've had, we've had an opportunity to talk to a, a handful of great guests so far, and we look forward to continuing to having kind of a broad variety of people on with different experiences to be able to kind of learn from them and let them tell their stories. Chris, how did you come about getting some of the people that you've interviewed? Uh, I think we, we've usually just kind of used our network that, I mean, Ian and I together have have uh, worked in sports for, I'm going to say, and I don't want to put a number on you. I don't know, but it, I, I've worked in the sports industry for over 10 years now. And so it's just kind of, uh, just kind of leveraging that network and getting people that we know um, uh, to come join us on the show. And, and just kind of, it's really meant to be conversational um, because then we like to share our experiences, excuse me, <clears throat> with everybody else um, who may be, have a passion like we do and want to get into the industry. Starting off with you, Colin, what is something that you learned now that you didn't know beforehand? Cool. Uh, definitely a lot about podcasting uh, and like the podcasting realm and audio. And I mean, I know I'm a millennial, so I should be naturally gifted with the technological stuff uh, and everything, but that's definitely not the case. So a lot of that aspect of things, uh, Ian and producer Kennedy have kind of put, put me on their back and got us across the goal line, but uh, so that's where I've definitely had most of the learning come in, uh, is in that area. Ian, what about you? What have you learned now that you didn't know beforehand? Yeah, I think, I think Colin brought up a great point of just kind of learning how this space works and, and editing and, and hosting podcasts and, and the whole nine yards there. But when I think about some of the, the guests that we've had on and, and maybe a, a common theme that we've heard, um, that's really important in sports and as well as probably any business is this idea that you really have to know your customers, um, whether that's in minor league baseball or when we're talking with Jess and technically her customers are the athletes that she's working with, uh, just the importance of, of having a good relationship with your customers and being able to kind of speak to them authentically, whether you're a brand or a team or a league or on an individual basis. Uh, that seems to be something that's incredibly prevalent and incredibly important to being able to be successful in this sports uh, industry. And when it comes to getting interviews like Jess, who works in the athletics, did you have to go through like the SID and stuff to get those interviews? Yeah, we haven't had to do um, anything super formal like that quite yet. Um, like Colin mentioned, we've kind of been lucky enough to just kind of have personal relationships with these people so far. So we've been able to kind of just do it um, through our own channels. But I think that you're absolutely, you bring up a great point where um, if you don't have those connections uh, directly with people using college de uh, athletic department SIDs or uh, like team PR departments is a great place to start to try and reach out to somebody to get in contact with uh, somebody with a university or with a team. Chris, can you talk about your time with, of course, the sports um, as a job? and partnering up with them? Yeah, so we just recently, uh, a little over a week ago, 
uh, we're woven into the to the sports as a job family and family podcast and we're excited to be a part of them and um you know we we so it's been we're the new kid on the block if you will in the family and and so it's not a whole lot has happened just yet uh but we're we plan on like growing and continuing to go forward with that and they're excited to be a part of it and can you talk about some of the things that you look to accomplish with of course the sport says a job yeah i think with that partnership we're excited to one, just get to know everybody that's on that team a little better. Uh, as Colin said, we're, we're kind of the new kids on the block. So step one is just getting to know that group a little more. And we're really excited to just collaborate with, with the different podcasts and the people that help out writing the articles for the website. You know, it's, it's this younger group of, of people who are all kind of had the same drive and the same mission and trying to do the same thing. Um, so excited to continue to learn from all of them, uh, and to be able to kind of work together for, for one mission and, and hopefully create a space for, uh, people who are in the sports industry or who are looking to get into the sports industry to come and be able to kind of get a behind the, the curtain, look at, uh, what goes on across the various realms within sports. Chris, can you talk about some of the future plans when it comes to the cutback? I think uh, as of right now, I think our, our big plan is just keep keep recording and keep putting out episodes. Uh, I think Ian and I, I'll speak for myself. I have a great time doing it and recording and, and um, we're just kind of kind of see where it takes us. Um, you know, we've we've started this whole thing in response to a pandemic. And I don't think Ian and I really ever thought we'd really be where we are today with it. So uh, I just think it's kind of to steal John Daly's line, just grip it and rip it, baby. <laughs> Ian, can you talk about some of the future things you plan to accomplish with the cutback? Yeah, I, I think first and foremost, it's exactly like Colin said, where it's continue to just uh, have these conversations. I think we both love that um, the podcast allows us to think critically and to put our own opinions out there. Um, and I think in the future, we want to continue to do that for ourselves, but also have it be a platform for other people to come on and have those types of discussions uh, and to share their opinions and their experiences. And part of that uh, really ties in well with our sports as a job partnership where uh, we can all kind of leverage each other and, and highlight what some of those other podcasts are doing um, and, and really just try and grow what we're doing uh, and, and get more people to listen ultimately. Right. Like, I guess that's always the ultimate goal is, uh, to, to see more people enjoy and interact with the content that we put out on a weekly basis. What advice would you give future sports talk podcasts looking to get started, starting off with you, Chris? Oh, uh, I mean, I think the first thing you got to know is like, there's going to be bumps in the road. Uh, I know when Ian and I, we've like, in, we're going on to number episode 27, and there's been so many different hurdles and things we've had to overcome. Uh, flexibility is a huge part of it. Working in a, with working with somebody who doesn't live in the same state anymore, uh, you know, things like that. So, and but I guess the biggest point of how I feel is just you have to have fun doing it. If you don't have fun doing it, it, it you will absolutely burn out, and there will be you won't continue. So, like you just have to enjoy it. And I think that's what Ian and I really have kind of found is we at the end of the day just genuinely enjoy doing it and enjoy each other's company and talking to each other about it and want to help the industry as a whole um, if we can. Ian what about you what advice would you give future sports talk podcasts? Yeah I think the only thing that I would add is to just always kind of remain true to who you are. Uh, we hear this word authenticity a lot it's kind of like the buzzword of of the past couple of years, especially in the sports sports world. But I think about when, when you think about uh, who people like to watch, whether it's on YouTube or Twitch or Instagram and, and who people like to listen to, it's people that they can connect with. And somebody's going to be able to connect with you if, if you're just always being yourself and letting your personality come through uh, whatever kind of content you're creating. So I think if, if, if you're looking to create a sports talk show or, or kind of exist in this sports realm, first and foremost, just be yourself. Uh, let your personality shine through, talk about what you like to talk about, ask the questions you want to ask, and uh, people are going to resonate with that. 
Where can my listeners find your podcast at on social media? And of course, if you have any podcast platforms. Yeah, good plug, question. Plug, plug. <laughs> um, so on Instagram and Twitter, you can find us at the Cutback Pod. Uh, you can also listen to us on Spotify. And more importantly, you can go to sportsasajob.com. Um, all of our, our episodes are there, as well as the rest of the podcasts and articles from the Sports the Job uh, podcast and, and kind of platform family. Thank you again, Ian and Chris, for your interview and best of luck with the Cutback Sports Podcast. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate Thank you having you. us on. Appreciate it. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Ian and Chris, for your interview and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.